I'm about to get glitter all over everything. Welcome to Handmade Happenings. I'm Melissa, and recently my niece asked me to make a Cinderella-inspired gown for her doll. I agreed and mentioned that I would need fancier fabric because all I had in my stash was cotton fabrics. So when my mom took her with her to the grocery store, she let her pick out some fabric. Unfortunately for me, what she picked out was very glittery tulle fabric. And I don't like glittery pretty much anything. Definitely not fabric because it just gets everywhere and it it's a big mess. So I really prefer not to mess with that. However, that is what she picked, so I set it aside while I finished other projects and began thinking about just what I wanted to do with this fabric. So while I was thinking about this, I came up with what I, at the time, considered a great idea. And that was that instead of making a dress all in one piece, I would make a top and a skirt and then make the skirt reversible. So I was going to do this because my niece had picked out, in addition to the tool, um, a piece of blue satin to use as a lining. And I was looking at it and thinking, well, it's too nice to use as just a lining. And the glittery tool just would not make sense to have just underneath of the skirt as like for the, um, like a petticoat. So. It made sense in my mind to make a reversible skirt and I came up with what I thought was a fairly simple idea of just doing kind of two circle skirts and placing them long sides together, adding the um, waistband and finishing up those back seams. Doesn't sound difficult, does it? Well, as it turns out, I either overcomplicated things or it was just difficult fabric to work with, or maybe a little of both. But before talking about the skirt and all of its troubles, I'm going to start with talking about the bodice. Um, so I used Simplicity 4702 View E, which is the one all the way on the end with the jeans, this one here. And it is sort of a peasant style, kind of loose fitting bodice, which is what I wanted because I was thinking that with the layers of the skirt, I wanted something looser fitting so that it would fit over the waistband. Um, it also turns out that it was a good thing I did pick that one because um, what I didn't consider when I started was that the satin fabric is just so unraveling and especially in that small scale is a bit of a challenge to work with. So the looser fit allowed for the fact that I was going to have to really kind of increase those seams to uh, keep the bodice from just coming apart. I cut all of the pieces for the bodice out of blue satin and then I began by attaching lace to the hem of the sleeves and then used a zigzag stitch to attach elastic to the bottom of the sleeves, pulling it slightly to gather that sleeve because it's more of a puff sleeve. The actual pattern calls for a casing to be created but that is in my opinion difficult to do on a doll size with easy to work with fabric, much less this satin that was very slippery. After that, the assembly was pretty much the same as uh, what the pattern calls for. I attached the sleeves to the front and back bodice pieces, gathered the neckline to the facing and attached it, sewed up the side seams and then hemmed all of those openings, or all of those raw edges, and then added Velcro to the back. Then I tried it on the doll and found out that for whatever reason the neckline was just too loose. And so I just took a piece of elastic and zigzagged it to the back the exact same way that I had done on the sleeves. And this did fix the too big problem. I think if anything it almost is a little too tight, but it does fit. so. I guess that's probably, um, between too tight and too loose, that's probably the better choice. Now for the skirt. This was a simple concept in my mind, but reality proved to be a little difficult, and that may have partly been because of the fabrics, um, 
So I may have to revisit that with like easier to work with fabrics. But anyway, I wanted to make a skirt that was reversible with a satin side and a tool side. And since the satin side had less going on, I'm going to start with that side. So I cut out a full circle skirt from the satin and cut a slit out for the um, back opening. I then hemmed the top inch and a half or so of either side of that um, opening because, you know, if you think about how a waistband works, you have to have that opening there. And then I searched the hem before starting to attach lace around the bottom. And this was the same lace that I had attached to the hem of the sleeves. Unfortunately, I did not actually have enough lace to go all the way around the skirt, which I realized at some point. And so I had to tail all of that out. Okay, so that one was my fault because I that was a spontaneous decision and I didn't bother to really look and see how much lace I had. So after pulling that out, I just hemmed the bottom and that's actually pretty much it for now for the satin side. My plan for that one was for it to be relatively plain and just let the fabric be the main like showcase of it. Up next is the side with the tool. And for some reason, I decided that I wanted multiple layers on this side. So the first thing I did was cut out two layers with the same circle skirt pattern that I had cut out the satin layer with. So this is an ungathered at the waist layer. I then cut out two more layers that had a larger opening at the waist so that it would be gathered up. And then I decided that on that layer, which was going to be the top layer, I wanted to add a ruffle. So I took rectangles of fabric, which were the leftovers from where I had cut the other skirts out of the tool, and cut them out and seamed two of them together, then gathered it up and attached it to that outer layer of tool, which was the one that was going to be gathered at the waist. And I wasn't terribly precise with this, basically, I was just attaching it somewhere around the middle of the skirt, which is where I wanted it to be so that the edge of the ruffle would hang approximately at the edge of the skirt. After it was attached, I covered that edge where the stitching was of attaching the ruffle with lace. And this is the same lace that I had tried to use on the hem of the satin layer, but this time I did make sure that I actually had enough before I started. Now it was time to start assembling the skirt. So to do this, I started by placing the satin layer right side down on the table, and then layering the two non-gathered tool layers on top. Then I took the layer that was going to be gathered and that had the ruffle on it, gathered it up to match the waistbands, pinned it all in place, and basted it. Uh, I also took the waistband and hemmed either end, um, either short end, and then attached the waistband to the skirt before bringing it over and wrapping it around those raw edges and folding it under and sewing it down so that there were no raw edges basically showing. And then I sewed up the back. On the tool side, I just sewed it straight up with the right sides together. On the satin side, I actually did a French seam just so that I wouldn't have that really ugly seam showing through the tool. Then I attached a snap and went to try it on the doll and discovered that it didn't fit. I'm not entirely sure what happened here because I know that waistband should have fit the doll. So I assume that it had to do with the layers that were going on and maybe that I hemmed the uh, sides of the waistband too small because of the satin and just having all of that trouble with it. Either way, it wasn't going to fit so I had to come up with a better idea. Now, the waistband was touching, it just wasn't overlapping in order to add or to use the snap. So what I decided to do was take some more white lace 
and I stitched it onto the waistband on the satin side, leaving long ties so that the dress could tie in the back. And unfortunately, this didn't really work either. It, um, it was almost like the lace was too flimsy, like I couldn't pull it tight without risking just breaking the lace. So I trimmed off the excess edges and then just stitched uh, ribbon ties onto the other side of the waistband, which was on the tool side. And while it's not a perfect fix, it is tight enough, I feel, that it will work. And then it doesn't really have to be tied in like a bow or anything. My niece could just tie it in a knot if that's easier for her. And it was finally done. so much for watching and now I am off to try and remove the glitter from my sewing machine.